Thank you, Dr. Trepanier. Related to these herbicides, the question is, is there any correlation with, for example, our dogs who might eat grass? Um, is there a concern about that? So, um, yes. Uh, so there are residues on lawns, you know, after they're treated. The, they'll say like, you know, do not walk on this lawn for 24 hours, but the residues are there longer than that. And the soil can also take those herbicides, uh, for example, 2,4-D, the, the soil can convert that 2,4-D that looks like it's disappeared into another chemical that we know can damage DNA. So yes, uh, eating grass would be a concern. The biggest concern though is like in the first couple weeks after the herbicide use. So um, again, the group at Purdue has done some nice studies looking at like if you put 2,4-D on grass, and then you let dogs go on the grass, and then you monitor the amount of 2,4-D in their urine. It's really high after about two days, um, and then it drops off over about 16 days. So it's more important the exposure time, the exposure relative to last application of 2,4-D than whether you eat the grass or just walk through it and then lick your paws. Fair enough. We had another question come in this afternoon relating to this uh, discussion of toxins. Are you aware of any work of people looking at, for example, pet bedding, pet toys, chemicals that are used in the production of these items that these animals are exposed to probably every day? I'm not, but if you open up, say, a pet bed or any, or like furniture that's got like you know, that you have to put together, like anything that you open that's new and you, you smell chemicals when you open it, that's off gassing of VOCs. So, you know, just because you do that once doesn't mean your dog's going to get cancer. But, you know, when you're buying products, try to buy products, like if you're buying furniture or like a pet bed that's got wood or something, buy it with uh, one that has low VOC paints and glues used in it. The specific things like in rubber or nylon toys, I don't really have any information about toxicity for those, but toys and things that are made overseas in countries that may not have very strong environmental regulations are always a concern for me. Um, I hope I don't sound elitist or biased, but I do try to buy products for my pets that are made in the USA because I know that we tend to have stronger regulations than some other countries. Um, European regulations are also very strong for um, chemical components of things that you can buy. So how is this, what you've talked about, yeah, let, let me ask you one other question. You mentioned arsenic. And um, I'm aware that rice, actually rice can be concentrate arsenic. Is anyone looking at potentially dog foods that are rice baked, you know, lamb and rice and, and those kinds of things? I really want to look at arsenic and herbicides in foods. It tends to be a, a more expensive process than looking at it in um, urine or blood. There is certainly a possibility that rice-based foods have more arsenic than non-rice-based foods. Most arsenic associated with food is not the toxic kind. It's not inorganic arsenic, but in rice, inorganic arsenic is a concern because of groundwater contamination with arsenic. So I don't know the question, the answer to that, but it is possible that rice baits diets have more arsenic in them. We just haven't been able to look. And one last question on this track. How has this information that you've presented changed maybe your habits with your own pets, if any? Well, we look at a bunch of different carcinogens. One is acrolein, and I found out that it's in potato chips, which has totally ruined my love of potato chips. Uh, but more relevant to this um, discussion, well, I've never, in the last 15 years, I have not used herbicides on my yard since I've had my own home. Um, I do not walk my dogs on perfect lawns. I don't let them walk when we're walking around in a park or in someone else's yard that looks pristine because that yard has obviously had herbicides um, 
treated. And I don't know when they were last treated just because there isn't a sign that says don't walk on this lawn for the last 24 hours. I, that's not, I don't think that's a good enough safety marker. And um, I also put a radon monitor in my house as well. Well, very, uh, very helpful and uh, some great information.